There is none like you in all the earth. What a privilege we have to be connected with you. There are those who have their connections in the government house. But Lord, like the psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Thank you because you do not sleep nor slumber. You do not allow the sun to smite us by day nor the moon by night. You are our keeper and we are grateful to you. Receive our praise this amazing Sunday. Let your name be glorified in our life. Tonight as we are gathered, we ask that you will speak to us. Speak to us in a language that will understand. And Lord, empower us to carry out the mandate of the Spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's celebrate the Lord as we take our seats. I want to welcome every one of us to church this Sunday evening. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm going to trust God that what we will deliver today will be very quickly done. Although a very important topic, but we will try our best to make it very fast. And I trust the Lord that you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Ocean of Grace is not a conventional church. And the reason is because our world is also changing its parameters of oppression. I want to believe someone that was born in the 18th or 17th century, if he comes to this world, he will die of shock, stroke, because everything is totally different. Praise the Lord. So I want us to be very attentive to what we're sharing today. And I trust God that God is going to speak to you in a special way in Jesus' name. The topic before us says the Obadiah Protocol. I have spoke to, uh, talked about it some days back and I've led us to pray in this direction it was heavy on my spirit two days ago to share this so that we don't keep it lingering there is a way the operation of the spirit uh, the spirit of God works in a certain dimension and it is key that when you understand how the spirit of God works you will be able to reap from the spirit one of the operations of the spirit is faith. When you believe something, even when you don't have what it takes to get that which you believe, by faith you are able to activate it. Praise the Lord. There are many people in scripture. One of them, the widow of Zarephath, she didn't have anything. But when the man of God spoke to her, what the man of God said and the Bible said that the oil did not run dry nor the meal did not run dry faith came into operation so what we're sharing uh, this evening is in that direction the Obadiah protocol is a concept that is used to explain the kingdom purpose of governmental position and influence. There is a kingdom purpose for governmental position and influence. Before now, a lot of us, I, I know many of us believe that Christians are not supposed to be in government. How many of you used to have that belief? You've ever had that belief before? I, I used to believe that many years ago. And then we see politics as a dirty game, right? In fact, it's a normal cliche. When you are a believer and you tell somebody that, I, I, want, to go to, I want to go into politics, you say, ah, bros, are you ready to lose your salvation? 
And the truth is, the reason why they say that is because of the way the game is played. The game is played by the rules, not of the world, but of the world. Isn't it? There's a lot of lines that you will cross to get into the politics of Nigeria, except you don't want to go far. You must be ready to slander, to malign, to cheat, to steal, to kill, if necessary. All kinds of blood sacrifices, occultic rituals, and so on and so forth, just so that you stay in power. In fact, it is a common knowledge that some of the leaders we have in our country today are members of certain secret societies. We even joke about it. Even musicians sing about it. So it's normal. So when you say you are going to politics, you say, ah, it's like you want to belong. That's what they tell you. But the truth is, Satan has hijacked a position that God has left for believers. And that's what happens in many places. People who play football know that when uh, 90 minutes is about getting up, the game begins to change, right? They put in dangerous players, those that can break legs. They are ready to collect red cards, <laughs> but make sure that the opponent does not win. They play rough. And so if you are the gentleman player, you will, you will realize that, man, I'm not ready to play in this game. And so it is in life. I was quoting Abraham Lincoln last week. He said, good things come to those who wait. Only the things left by those who hustle. So when you go out today, even when you want to go and buy fuel in the filling station, you notice that there's a lot of rush, especially when there is fuel crisis. And if you are like a gentleman like me, you wait at the back for somebody to recognize you and help you. Otherwise, but there are those who will go there to hustle, to get, isn't it? And it applies in many areas. Even business today, the competition in business is so high. Only those who are ready to go the extra mile can take their business to another level. So that's what um, is related to what we're talking about. But when you look at the Bible, you realize that all authority and power comes from God. God is the institutor of all authority and power. God is not powerful. God is power. Praise the Lord. You know, when you say someone is powerful, you say, well, he has some level of power. But God is the owner of power. He's the distributor. We are not supposed to call them P-H-E-D because they are not holding any power. What they do is they distribute power. Praise the Lord. God is the only person that his name... His personality, his attribute speaks of power. Because everything that exists, exists because of him. So God is the one who decides, who sits on a position. And God, beginning from Genesis, has given us the dominion mandate. I'm sure we know the dominion mandate. Be what? Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue and do what? Dominate. When God created the heavens and the earth, the way he gave power to Adam and Eve was as if there was an enemy with him. The word subdue is not a language you use when you want to eat food. I want to subdue this rice. <laughs> what is the rice? Is you don't use such language. You say you subdue your enemy. In the use of English, there are certain words we just use. They, they have places where they belong. Praise the Lord. And that's why every part of, uh, every part of life have certain jargons. When you enter the medical field, they begin to mention IV, eh? IM, and the rest. Those who are there know what IV and IM mean. But to you, a mathematician, IV means four. But to a medical doctor, it means intravenous. So the place where you are speaking a certain language will determine what you are talking about. Praise the Lord. 
So when we talk about subdue, it's a military language used to show that there is an enemy waiting to resist you. That's why God say dominate, submit, subdue. Satan, as soon as God created the earth, Satan came to earth to challenge man of the authority. Why? Because Satan has already been expelled from heaven. And he saw earth as a vibrant, a verdant place for him to exercise his power. Praise the Lord. If you study, I don't know whether we call it human geography or what is it called, you will understand that humans, they choose a particular location for many reasons. You choose a location because there are maybe food, water, spacious environment, and then the, the region is not being contested. When you go to a place and they are fighting for that land, what do you do? If you don't have the power to overcome them, you move. And that is why migration takes place. Certain tribes keep moving until you see a people that you can overpower and then you take over that territory. That's how human beings migrated. So if you've been wondering what happened in Tower of Babel, where is Tower of Babel? Somewhere in Iraq. We all came from there. When the, 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 the Torah was destroyed and languages were scattered, we started moving about. Those who could understand ethic started flowing together. Those who could understand uh, Igbo and the rest, they just grouped together. Of course, some of them got start scattered. And then maybe later, later, their language evolved. That one is, when you enter another field, we'll teach you that one. But what I'm trying to say is that people continue to migrate based on resistance. If there's resistance in a the place, there's a tendency for them to move until they get a place where they settle. You remember the story of Abraham, I mean Isaac. He said, the Bible says in Genesis 26 that he dug wells. He redug the wells that his father had dug. But those um, um, inhabitants of the land had filled those wells with what? With sand. So he had to redig them. And when he dug those wells, what did they do? They strove for the well. They were striving. No, it's our own. It's our land. He left the wells. He kept moving until he got to a place where they did not strive for that land. And then he settled there. Praise the Lord. But in life, a lot of us, we have chosen to leave that which God has given to us to the enemy. So, there are 12 areas. We're going to see the 12 areas as time goes on. There are 12 areas of life, but a lot of us had already given up governance to the enemy. And that is why if you travel around the world, most people that are in power, they are not believers. Let's even leave the president. Let's even look at the smaller positions around your area. The chairman of your street. Your landlord. And just keep moving like that. You notice that most of the time, you find that unbelievers are the people who are in position and influence. Whereas we have believers there. Why? Because we have become believers that cannot fight. We give up our inheritance to other people because we feel that to be a Christian is to be quiet and gentle and allow people to trample on you. And it includes even mosquitoes biting us and we fall sick. Because you don't want to kill the uh, uh, mosquito. After all, if you, killing is a sin. Praise the Lord. You need to understand that all kinds of theories are the theories that people carry today. Some people even believe that it is not the will of God for them to be too successful. That God's will for them is to just be what? Successful. Just me, myself, and my family. Anyone that is beyond that, that's where problems start from. And so we are already, we've conditioned ourselves to be content with little. We are very content with very little. And the truth is, our measure of even little is even substandard to the word of God. So when we talk about 
being content with little, it looks like a fair language. But when you measure your little with God's standard, you're falling short. Praise the Lord. So God's desire is for us to be in charge. For us to be in charge, not to rule the way the world is ruling. Because Jesus clearly told the disciples that you will not lord over the, 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 the others the way the world does it. Praise the Lord. You are going to do it by my own principle. Was Jesus a king? Was he a king? Now, what was his mode of operation? Was he operating like the conventional kings of his time? Jesus' kingship was not enforcing, uh, was not by force on the people. Praise the Lord. Was by bringing out the value in the people. The police are known, at least Nigerian police, are known for using force. In fact, one of the reigning languages is police brutality. Huh? And it's not just Nigeria. I mean, many countries. The appetite of South Africa, um, is it Soviet Union? Even the last the George Floyd of the U.S. is still police brutality. So there's really no country that is free from this abuse of power. But you notice that the more you use force on people, as in brutal force, what do you breed in the people? Huh? What do you breed in the people? Rebellion. They used force on one guy, and then the whole state went on riot. Are you seeing it? If the, if the police had done differently, if the police had what are you carrying? I don't even know the story. So what was it the guy was carrying that they, they beat him? What are you carrying? It's like you're carrying a gun and then we're going to arrest you and then you explain why you're carrying a weapon. That story will not have gone around the world. Do you know that? So, but because something went wrong, the way he held the guy and the guy uh, choked and died, the whole world has changed. Praise the Lord. So, Let's come back to um, our topic. The kingdom purpose of power, wealth, and authority. What is God's purpose for power? God has a purpose for power. He has a purpose for wealth. He has a purpose for authority. And one of the things you notice is that these three go together. If you pick any one of the three, you notice that he always comes with the other two brothers. Isn't it? A man who has power is likely to use his power over time to get what? To get wealthy. I mean, power is already authority. If we check Wiki's account when he came into government and now, you know the difference is clear. Praise the Lord. And that is the case with most African leaders. Not just African leaders, anywhere in the world. It's the same human being. So, we say Obadiah Protocol is a concept that is used to explain the kingdom purpose of governmental position and influence. Governmental position and influence usually comes with power, wealth, and authority. The Obadiah Protocol explains how believers are expected to plan prepare and position themselves for elevation into sensitive offices where such influences can be used for advancing the agenda of God. Praise the Lord. There are sensitive positions. There are sensitive places. There are key positions that once a believer is there, and when I mean a believer, I'm talking about a kingdom-minded believer. You know that heaven will boast that we have our man on ground. Praise the Lord. You know that things will work out. And we're going to see a particular person that we named him, uh, named after this protocol, who is Obadiah. Kingdom believers are expected to use their power, wealth, and authority to extend God's influence on earth. Every resources you have has one purpose. To extend what? God's influence on earth. So when you pray that prayer, die will be done on earth, thy kingdom come. What you are actually saying is that God, empower me so that I can establish your kingdom. Praise the Lord. 
Because God will not come down to do it, but he's going to do it through you. Through you and I. First Kings chapter 18, if we read from verse 3, the man in charge of Ahab's household affairs was Obadiah, who was a devoted follower of the Lord. Once when Queen Jezebel had tried to kill all of the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had hidden 100 of them in two caves, 50 in each, and had fed them with bread and water. That's the introduction of who Obadiah was. They didn't tell us where he's from. They didn't tell us who his parents were. But the very significant thing that he did and we're going to break this down, but let's read a few more verses to see what we can pick from his life. That same day, while Elijah was on the way to see King Ahab, the king said to Obadiah, we must check every stream and brook to see if we can find enough grass to save at least some of my horses and mules. You go your way and I will go the other. We will search the entire land. So they did, each going alone. Suddenly, Obadiah saw Elijah coming towards him. Obadiah recognized him at once and fell to the ground before him. Is this really you, my lord Elijah? He asked. Yes, it is I, Elijah replied. Now go and tell the king I am here. Oh, sir, Obadiah protested. What harm have I done to you that you are sending me to my death? For I swear by God that the king has searched every nation and kingdom on earth from end to end to find you. And each time when he was told Elijah isn't here, King Ahab forced the king of that nation to swear the truth of his claim. And now you say, go and tell him Elijah is here. But as soon as I leave, the spirit of the Lord will carry you away. Who knows where? And when Ahab comes and can't find you, he will kill me. Yet I have been a true servant of the Lord all my life. Has no one told you about the time when Queen Jezebel was trying to kill the Lord's prophets? And I hid a hundred of them in two caves and fed them with bread and water. And now you say, go tell the king that Elijah is here. Sir, if I do that, I'm dead. But Elijah said, I swear by the Lord God of the armies of heaven, in whose presence I stand, that I will present myself to Ahab today. So Ebediah went to tell Ahab that Elijah had come and Ahab came out to meet him. Praise the Lord. Now, Obadiah became famous during the time of famine in Israel. You remember who Elijah was? As soon as Elijah came on the scene, in fact, what made Elijah popular was because right from his secret place, God gave him an instruction. He said, go and tell Ahab that there is going to be famine three and a half years. Imagine somebody announcing to the president of Nigeria that there's not going to be rain in Nigeria for three and a half years. Of course, you know, they will just laugh and say, young man, go and relax. Don't worry. We're even having flooding as a result of too much rain. That's what he will say. But that's what he said, and he left. Like joke, joke. Six months, oh boy, no rain. One year, ah, <laughs> this is unusual. You know, imagine if there's no rain for one year in Nigeria. Wouldn't it raise dust? I mean, a lot, there will be panic because there will be crops. A lot of crops will die. One year and six months. Two years, ah, by the second year, the king already knew that <laughs> what that guy said is already happening. And immediately they started looking for him. You, you saw what we read. The, the Bible says they searched over every nation at that time looking for Elijah. They didn't know that Elijah was, they thought he would be in uh, governmental houses. You know, with that, someone with that kind of prophetic grace should be uh, with kings and all those people but he was in the widow's house of Zarephath they didn't look for him there because they felt uh, he's too big to be there praise the Lord it's just like you now looking for Buhari is it likely for you to be checking Rukboku for Buhari eh? you're not going to be checking Rukboku you'll, be, you'll first go to hotel presidential there are some key places you didn't know that he's living at uh, Okporo there praise the Lord that was what happened. And they looked for him. Finally, when Obadiah by chance met Elijah, and Elijah said, go and tell the king that I will appear. <laughs> he said, stop that rough play. For three and a half years, we've been looking for you. 
and you want me to go and tell the king so that you will disappear again. Sir, please, I'm a believer. I've been doing things for God. And he started narrating the things that he had done for God. He said, I've served the Lord all my life. But Elijah told him, he said, don't worry. I give you my word. I will show up to the king today. And he believed him. Praise the Lord. Let's quickly look at things that we can pick from here. Number one, of course, he works for the government of Israel. The Bible clearly even says that he was the chief of staff. As a chief of staff, is that an influential position? Huh? Who is the chief of staff of Nigeria today? What's his name? His name is Gambari. Huh? I may not get all the full name, but at least I know that one. He was a devoted follower of the Lord. He said, apart from the things he said he did, he said he has been following the Lord all his life. And then number five, he was a risk taker for the kingdom of God. Do you know what it means to come against Jezebel? Praise the Lord. Do you know what it means to come against Jezebel? Even Elijah himself, when he had issue with Jezebel, he ran for his life. Praise the Lord. To tell you who Jezebel was. It's not just an iron woman. No. The woman is a highly occultic woman. She's the daughter of a priest in another land. I think a king that is, uh, I can't remember whether he's, is it Moab or Ammon, one of those fetish nations. So they appointed a priestess to Israel so that she can turn the people's heart from God to the worship of Baal. So the woman is not just an ordinary iron woman. I said the woman is hard working. It's not that one. She has jazz. Serious one. Praise the Lord. So, for Badaya to take that risk and keep hundred men who were prophets, hide them and feed them. Only God knows how long. The man must be someone who has strong fear for God. Praise the Lord. So that was the thing that Obadiah did. Now we're going to see some things from his life. Just flow with the message. I know you guys are writing. Don't worry. These things are available. I don't know why you are copying notes. Or should we copy notes? <laughs> we'll start from Genesis chapter 1. Start copying. Praise the Lord. And then look at what are the observations from Obadiah's life. Number one, he was an influential man. Don't worry, these things are available. So just, just here, except some very key things that you want to put down. He was an influential man, most likely a wealthy man. Because when Obadiah was feeding those hundred people, you think he was collecting money from the governor, the, the president? Was it likely? Are we together? It's not, like, it's not possible for him to even collect money to go and feed people that they are looking for to kill. So he must be running from his own resources. And that means that he was a wealthy person. Number two, he probably got into government because he was influential. You need to understand that Ahab, though an Israelite, was a worshipper of Baal. So in his appointment, he's not going to appoint people that are not going to flow with him. But the reason why he could not ignore Obadiah was the guy had some resources that he could use. You remember that Ahab was the same guy who was eyeing Naboth's vineyard. Naboth had a vineyard. He was an industrialist that had, you know what a vineyard is? A place where they plant vine trees that is used for making wine. When you hear vineyard, you think it's some four trees or five trees that were there. Is that what you think? Why would a king be eyeing four or five trees? It was an industrial layout where this guy was making wine. So he was eyeing that plot and wanted to take it. That's where... So Ahab already has big eyes. He looks for people who has wealth. So he brought Obadiah into government because Obadiah was an influential person. Praise the Lord. If you study the politics of Nigeria, you understand that when they are making appointments, they appoint people who either have resources or have some kind of social influence. 
Nobody is going to bring you into power just because you are good looking. Praise the Lord. You know the most pretty ladies or handsome guys are not the people ruling us. So it's not by that one they can send you to, what do they call it? Eh, beauty pageant. It's not governance. In governance, they are checking your account balance. Are you getting me? They are checking your social influence, your social status. Can you pull crowds? Are people following behind you? That's what it is in, 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 in politics. So, Obadiah was an influential person. Number three, his source of influence is very likely to have been financial. We've already established that one because for him to feed about 100 people, <laughs> you know what it means to feed 100 persons? On the average, to feed a grown man, normally in Nigeria today, per meal is 500. 500 times 3, 1, 5 times 100. No, no, let's do the math so that you can appreciate what this guy is doing. 1, 5 times 100, 150K, is it? Now, 150K per day. Now, run it for one month. Are you seeing it? it has entered millions? So, for this guy to be running this operation, only God knows how long. Without convenience. No, this king was not aware. This guy has money. Praise the Lord. Number four, Ahab tolerated him in government in spite of the fact that he was not a follower of Baal. Most likely because he was good at his job. For Ahab to appoint him chief of staff, you know this chief of staff, that means when it comes to administration of the governor, of the, that, that government is coming from that person. All the meetings, the countries, all the ambassadors, everybody reports to the chief of staff. It's a very powerful position. Praise the Lord. Very, in fact, the chief of staff as at now, is more powerful than any minister in the country. He's more powerful than the senior president. Do you know why? When you want to see the president, you have to see him first. If he doesn't set up your meeting, nothing for you. Even when you submit a document, the document may not reach the president. This, are you getting my point? If you've ever gone to any government office, you know how powerful secretaries are. Secretary, that small lady, that is there. Try her. You will be surprised. And that's it. So, he was in government because he was good at his job. If you read in between the lines, that passage we just read, you will see that he, himself and Ahab were the two persons going out to see where they can get resources to support their livestock. The, you need to, when you read the Bible, you, you, you must have some imagination. They were not dealing in oil and gas in those days. What were they dealing in? Livestock, agricultural products. Israel didn't have silver or gold. Any gold or silver you see in Israel is not from Israel. It's coming from other lands. Huh? The gold of Ophir, gold of Havilah. These were not Israelite towns or nations. So Israel was trading in livestock. But this guy was in charge of the administration. So the, the Ahab tolerated, he wanted him to be there because of his skill. Number six, or number five, Je, Jezebel led by loyalists. Did not know of Obadiah's secret feeding program of the prophets of God because he was a master strategist. Jezebel, in spite of the fact that she had about 850 people who were loyal to her, because you had 400 prophets of Baal and 450 prophets of the grooves. Huh? All of these people, did not, they were not aware of what Obadiah was doing. Why? Because he was very good at covering up what he was doing. It's a skill. We're going to talk about it a little more. Number six, Obadiah could recognize Elijah even after three and a half years of him being off the grid. Obadiah, the moment he saw Elijah, he was able to know that this was a prophet of God. Of course, we're not just talking about physical recognition. We're talking about spiritual recognition. When a man of God shows up in your life, can you tell the difference? The ability to discern. I was listening to Mike Murdoch this morning, and he said something 
about um, what's her name? Abigail. You know who is Abigail? Who is Abigail? Huh? He said David's wife. Is that the best way to describe Abigail? <laughs> Abigail was Nabal's wife. Huh? Originally Nabal's wife. It was later she became David's wife. What was it about Abigail? Abigail, the day she saw David, recognized that this guy is going to the top. Of course, she wouldn't do all the things she did. David was on his way to come and kill Nabal, right? And Abigail got information and intercepted David and told David that I know that someday you are going to be king. How did she know? There is a way you see a person by your interaction. You know this person is going far. Praise the Lord. That's how you choose your friends. There are people who are time wasters. There are people who will delay your destiny. In fact, some people will truncate your destiny. When you interact with somebody, 10, 5 minutes, you should know how far that person is going. Praise the Lord. One of the things that can destroy a person's life is choosing a friend. I'm telling you, as simple as that is, if you choose the right person, you might get to the top. There was a story that I, I, I shared on our Ocean of Grace platform. I don't know how many of you saw it. Of somebody during the Civil War who ran back to the east and his house was being taken care of by his neighbor, a Yoruba person. Of course, Igbos left the west and the north and came to the east. And this particular house was being taken care of by a Yoruba man. And you know what he did? He didn't say that Igbo guy would have died in the east. He kept all the money from the rent in the house in Lagos. Till after the war, and this guy came back, he handed all the money to him. And then this guy, who he handed this money to him, somehow, somehow, entered into politics and became vice president. One day, this other man, who kept the money, wanted to start a bank. Of course, by him keeping the money, you know he has a grace to keep money. He wanted to start a bank and they refused him license. Guess who gave him the license? He remembered his friend. And that one just said, don't worry, your license will be ready. The minister of finance called him. Is it finance or which? Uh, and they gave him the license. It's just a digression to tell you how important your friends are. When you check your contacts, there are some contacts you need to delete. There are others you need to add. Praise the Lord. When you see somebody who is wasting time today, don't think he will not waste time tomorrow. He's already telling you his character. But when you see people who talk in a certain way, know that these ones are going far. Praise the Lord. So, Obadiah happened to recognize Elijah. And then, Obadiah believed in the promise from the servant of God. When a servant of God or an anointed person or somebody tells you something in the name of the Lord, how much of belief do you have in it? Praise the Lord. You know, when we say the word of the Lord came to people, okay, for instance, a lot of us have heard the story that Dangote was in a plane and Archbishop Benson Idawosa had two guests that needed to travel and they were already behind uh, they, they, in fact they, were, they actually missed their, their flights and they needed to catch the last flight from Benin to Lagos so that they can meet up with an international flight so Archbishop Densin entered the airplane that was already ready to move and said please so I have two guests who need to connect with a flight to Lagos with this flight so that they can meet up with the international flight Please, can you just have a way of just helping them? And all the people there, none of them stood up, except who? Dangote and his assistant. They stood up. And then he made a, pronounce, a pr pronouncement, right? And today we celebrate Dangote. The question I want to ask you, how many men of God have spoken to you that you didn't take it seriously? 
did you think as at that time Archbishop Benson also had so much influence? If he had so much influence, the people there, everybody would stand up for him. They didn't see him as which one is this one again? If Bishop Oyedepo come and say, please, bros, we want to use your shop for prayer meeting, will you not give him? Will you tell him that, bros, now redeem how they go? <laughs> you never reach like that. In fact, sir, I've cleared my house eh, in case you have guests that want to stay. You go sleep on that bridge just to honor the man of God. No, be so. Because you know he is already influential. Or we get comes around and say, bros, please, can we just relax in your area for some time? You quickly do it because you already know who the person is. But when the person doesn't seem to have that kind of influence, do you, are you able to recognize the greatness in that person and give that person the respect? Praise the Lord. So this, this is something that I can't really teach you. It's going to come by the, the Spirit of God. But it's going to respond to your desire on the inside. Because you meet a lot of times, people give prophetic words and you just take it casually. You don't know that the prof prophetic word is like a key that God gives you by grace that you will use to open doors at the appointed time. Praise the Lord. A prophecy can take you to a place that you don't have any resources to get there. You don't know. It says, it's the word of the spirit. It's like a wind. It carries you. So, Elijah, uh, Obadiah believed what Elijah said. That, that shows that he has value for the word of God. Praise the Lord. Okay, so what can we pull out of Obadiah's life? One of the things we see there is that we see the power of political and governmental influence. In saving about 100 persons. Tell me how many people you know who are not working with government that can feed the 100 people. You know, we just did the, the calculation. Conveniently. How many? You must be a super businessman to be able to... I don't know who... Somebody should help us punch that calculation now. 150K times 30. Give us, give us the answer so that we know what we are dealing with. Because we are talking about practical terms. We didn't talk about clothes too, and where they are staying. Too, but let's just talk about feeding because that's very key. 150K times 30. What did we get? Huh? Okay, 4,500,000. There about, so almost 5 million. So you are spending on feeding 5 million every month they must, you, you must really have it number two we see that we see how powerful influence can get you into what how powerful influence can get you into government when I was hearing the story of Peter Obi Peter Obi was the head of a bank when he became a governor people were looking for strategic uh, minded men that they can give they can support to come into governance and that's how they got to Peter Obi and spoke with him and said we're going to support you nobody is going to look for you and give you position if you are not influential praise the Lord and you know we said influence is not just money it can deal with what it can be power it can be authority are you getting my point now? What, what do we mean? When the elections of 2015 was to be conducted, we learned that the president then, or his wife, went to see... What's this man in Enugu? What's this man in Enugu? Huh? Reverend Umba Is he Reverend Umbaka? Are we guys, are we living at all? <laughs> it's like I'm talking to Cameroonians. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what's this guy in Enugu? Who again is in Enugu now? Okay, so when he went there, is Mbaka a wealthy man? That's not what you know Mbaka for. It's not wealth. But he has authority. Eh? He has some influence. If Mbaka says, support this guy, people are likely to, isn't it? 
that's what we're talking about. So they don't just get anybody into government. They look for people who have influence, people who can pull crowd. And that is what, uh, that was how Obadiah got into government. Number three, we said financial influence is perhaps one of the biggest influences in our time today. In our time today, one of the biggest influences is what? Financial influence. If you don't have money, many things are going to be difficult for you to execute. In fact, we are told that many oil companies have funded secret wars. As in wars in countries were secretly funded by multinational companies because they are the ones that have the kind of money that can do that. Praise the Lord. Many of the crises in different parts of the world, if you check it very well, you understand that the people funding those crises are people that have money. Boko Haram crisis today. I've explained to us how expensive weapons are. For it to continue on like that, it means that there are people that are funding it. And these people are people who have money. Administrative and leadership skill is highly sought after in social and political spaces. They are looking for people who are able to do what? To administer. If you are good at the job, a position is waiting for you. Why did Joseph get into office? Do you think that it was because he interpreted Pharaoh's dream? Talk to me. Why? What was it that Joseph did that made him get into office? Huh? Talk to me now. Are we not reading the Bible? Was it because he interpreted Pharaoh's dream? What was it? He gave a solution of what they needed to do. Fine. After interpreting dream, he didn't stop there. He said, and this is what Pharaoh should do. Get the wise men in the land. Let them apportion cities where they will store grain. Isn't it? It was the wise counsel that Joseph gave that made Pharaoh say, can we find anyone as wise as this? There are those people who have been interpreting dreams. They are still in Pharaoh's court. They didn't go anywhere because they will be kept for what? Dream interpretation. Anytime I have a dream again, I will call you. But because Joseph went further to say, this is what Pharaoh must do. Check your Bible. That was why Pharaoh said, uh uh-uh, we've not had this one before. Are you listening to me? So, bringing this down to our life, it means that it is not just enough for you to identify problems. Do you have solution for those problems? Because a lot of us knows what is wrong with Nigeria. We know what is wrong with River State. Do you have a solution? So next time, if you don't have solution, don't identify any problem. Because it's of no use. Praise the Lord. Are you guessing where I'm, go- where I'm going to now? So when we talk about Obadiah protocol, it's not just for you to identify what is going on around the world. It is for you to ask God for the solution. In Daniel's case, they identified a problem. There was a dream they could not solve. What did Daniel do? He went in with his three friends and they prayed. And in the night, God gave them the solution. Praise the Lord. So Daniel was an, it was an ordinary man like you and I. But what made the difference was he added prayer to his observation. Number five, diplomacy and clandestine skill is one key reason many believers cannot survive government and political um, corridors in the uh, political corridors of power today. A lot of times, believers get the opportunity of going there, but because they don't have diplomatic skills, what happens? They are pushed out of power. Are you aware that our vice president is nowhere to be found again? Are you aware? Huh? Is there? 
<laughs> is there. If you Google his name, you may be no result found. Is there, but they have shifted him out because it takes diplomatic skills. Let me tell you one of the things that he may have done wrong. You know, when you come into government, they know that you are a honest person. They will set you up. What would they set you up with? With your weaknesses. When they know you like money, they will vote extra money to you and see whether you will return the remaining. Do you know they tried that same thing with Daniel and they failed? Daniel outlived the people that set him up because he was smart. A lot of times believers will just go, don't worry, Holy Ghost uh, has my back. And then you, you, you are not clever in your strategy. How dare you submit a receipt? They sent you to go and do a business. You are submitting the document back and you did not have a photocopy. Okay, you submit and the doctor eats and say, this is what you brought and your name is there. And they call the company and say, yes, it's you. But the figures are different. And there's no evidence to exonerate yourself. Are you seeing what I'm... I just pointed that as one example that a lot of us make these mistakes. We just say, no, don't worry, I trust him. You trust him, really. You don't trust somebody without testing a person. Even God told Abraham, said, now I know. Are you saying God didn't know him from before? Are you getting what I'm trying to say? A lot of times, I mean, I have, I have had a lot of people disappoint me at different points in time because I used to trust people a lot back then. But now I don't trust like that. It tests first. You pass through a season of tests. Then you prove your loyalty. I got that from God. Praise the Lord. You know when you see somebody, ah, no, like some of you now, you just see somebody saying, I just like this guy, I like this guy. Please take my car key. And then the next thing you hear that a Lexus LS430 has been reported stolen. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you so many things. A lot of pastors are in pains because they felt that the person who started ministry with them took their congregation, broke away with their members. Let's leave that one for ministry lessons. Praise the Lord. Okay, so these are the 12 gates of influence. These are the 12 areas that every one of us, one way or the other, belong to. But I want to tell you that there are few of these gates that applies to the Obadiah Protocol. Are you getting my point? No matter how successful you are in sports, you're not going to be able to do much for our nation. Do you know that? You're not going to be able to do much. But there are key areas that when you sit there, you can influence decisions in the, in the, in the country. These three areas, government, law, and, huh? and politics, People who sit here are the ones who decide how you behave. Praise the Lord. Today, they have raised hate speech from 5K to 5 million. Are you seeing it now? Who did it? People sitting up there. So a lot of us know how to express our grievances on social media. If they catch you, you know how much? That's it. That's because you choose to stay in church to pray for change and transformation while those other people who did not pray are sitting there and deciding what happens to you. So when we talk of the power of policy making and power of enforcement, it rests on this area. I know when, many of you now, you are not targeting to be in government. I am very sure of that. You know what you, what you will do to yourself? other people will come and determine your life. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you like pray, the, your life is going to be affected by other people's decision. That's the truth. You can have a governor that will come into River State and tell you that all churches should close before 6 p.m. I mean, it has happened before now. It's the COVID-19, is that not what people experienced? 
they can tell you the number of people that will be in your churches. They can even decide, in fact, with the new law that just came out this August, they can decide to remove your general overseer and put a Muslim there. You've not had it. Don't worry. Be reading uh, Genesis chapter 4 while others are reading Punch. Praise the Lord. So we're trying to tell you that it's time for believers to step into those places where decisions are being made. Even the money, you don't have the money because you are, you are, choosing, you are choosing the lower areas of the society to succeed. Praise the Lord. So every one of us must migrate to this new plan. Now let's take the last section so that we pray because of time. But I'm sure I would like to share this stuff with us later so that we can look at it. Okay, just quickly run through this. Oil and gas, maritime shipping. How many of you are in any of these sectors? These sectors that are there now. How many of you are in any of these sectors? Just raise your hand up. I'm not going to ask you any question. This is the only question I'm asking you. Is anyone in this sector? Which of them? Huh? Okay, comedy. Uh, under entertainment. Okay. You own a comedy company, right? Okay. You are still coming up. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Now, these sectors are the highest money earners in the world. So, if you are wondering why you don't have much money, you are in the wrong sector. Are you getting it now? If you are not in oil and gas, maritime shipping, aviation, high-tech manufacturing, social media and internet marketing, real estate development, investment banking, industrial agriculture, entertainment industry, software developers. It's not all of them, but these are the key ones. You understand why much money is not flowing to your area. Praise the Lord. So if you are praying, God, enlarge my coast, what are you telling God? Change my package. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the wrong package. I'm telling you the truth. And the gap is going to continue to go wider if you don't migrate to that new plan. Do you know little boys today are becoming superstars because they do comedy? But you, you are busy talking for money tonight. Nobody is paying you one naira because you are wasting your skill. And there are so many stuff. Even singing, you can make a lot of money. Once you enter into any of these industries, you will see that a lot of money will start flowing in. But this is the time you need to start your plan. Praise the Lord. Sure, you, you didn't notice that medicine is not here. Did you notice it? Eh? If you're a dog, you know, in those days when we say you read medicine, you get money. Not be this world today. Things have changed. Everybody is doing self-medication. Everybody is online asking Google, if I have this kind of pain on my back, Google will answer you. Go and take bitter leave and mix it with. So doctors are not getting money again. But you know, you cannot go on Google and ask them how to build a house. You still need that skill. Are you getting the whole stuff? So anything people can do for themselves, they're already doing for themselves. So if you're in the wrong trade, you miss out things. All these guys that are photographers, you know they're not getting money again because everybody has the skill now. I mean, when last did you print a picture? Are you seeing it now? So this, a lot of things are changing. and you, you need to change your plan also so that you don't stay in an industry that is dwindling when other ones are increasing. Okay, so these are people you could study. You could study Joseph in the Bible, David, Daniel, Uzziah. They are great guys. I won't have time to talk about diplomatic skills another time. But let's look at how do we activate the Obadiah protocol so that we can pray. Number one, you can begin by praying for influence to come into government. You can support kingdom believers that are in government. If you know any believer that is already in government, whether local government chairman, commissioner, uh, governor, whatever, you can support them, encourage them to do the right thing. Number three, you can get a clear vision from God on which specific area to participate. You know, when we say governance, it's not necessarily for you to 
be in politics. You can become the community, what do they call it? CDC chair, right? You can be a member of an association. You can head association of accountants, accountancy, it's still politics. MBA is politics, right? And there are so many of these associations that a lot of believers don't look at. But these are the people who make decisions that affect us. So you can, you can be a member of an NGO. You can pray for a burning desire from God, for social transformation. You can pray, plan, and prepare to enter politics. You need to get trained on how to interface uh, kingdom governance and what? Earthly government. You know, they are not the same, but there is an interface. For instance, you are in a meeting where people are gathered and you say, can we open, the, uh, open to Genesis chapter 4? You know, a lot of people will frown at what you are doing because you don't need to read Genesis chapter 4, but you can live Genesis chapter 4 by your life. Are you getting my point now? There are certain places where they may not allow you pray or do some of the religious things we do. But you, are, you, you, you still need to be there because you need to influence their decisions. For instance, if they say we want to vote 4 million to establish nightclubs in Rukboku, you can object and say to what advantage will uh, setting up nightclubs. Say no to allow our youth. You know our youth are restless. Let them have a place to go and cool their temper. And then you tell them that I don't think that will help in cooling. Rather I think it's going to create more. Are you just what I'm trying to say? So you don't need to say the Bible says nightclub is a sin. You, you, you are missing the point. The moment you come from that angle, they will clamp down on you because they say you are carrying what? Church stuff. But when you talk from the social point and let them understand that it is better we set up ICT centers for the youth than nightclubs. And then tell them the trends of ICT, the value. And then ask them what are the value from nightclubs. Everybody will say... Bros, bros, it makes sense. You're you making sense. Are you getting my point? Many times we think these people are sensible. They are not that sensible. I'm telling you, common sense is not very common. I'm telling you the truth. So, the wisdom, as you begin to suggest, you see that changes begin to happen. I'm, I'm saying this because I'm a witness. I've been in different platforms that my council took precedence. And to me, I felt that everybody should just know. But my brother, they didn't know. Other people are thinking other ways. Though. Me, I'm being driven by the Holy Ghost. Other people are being driven by other things. Praise the Lord. Someone who has taken Hennessy and comes to a meeting. You know what is driving him now? You don't know what Hennessy is. Don't worry. Praise the Lord. If they ask you now, you call Star and Golda. Praise God. One day we'll just hold conference. At that conference, I'll be introducing you to world royalty. <laughs> okay, so get involved in the governance starting from where you are. So you can start from your church. Which role are you playing in church? What role? Are you those who just come, guests, special guests of honor, and leave? You need to be involved in your church different groups, different associations, and play leading roles. Okay? That's where you begin to understand leadership. In the community. In the community where you are. Even in your compounds. Some of you, you live in houses where anybody behaves anyhow. Nobody talks to anybody. And then you are saying, God, I want to lead Nigeria. God say, I know where you start from. Start from your compound, your backyard. Eh? People throw debts anywhere around your compound and you never say anything. Your NGOs, your states, and your nation. Praise the Lord. And then in all of this, you go in the spirit and not in your mind. Why am I saying this? This is also another area where certain believers have missed it. When you go into politics, just say, don't worry, I'm going with a clean hand. And you don't go in the power of the spirit. There are those who are coming with, with occultic power. Many of those people who, use, who sit in those meetings, they don't come empty-handed. Around their waists, in their pockets, 
Even some of them have special rings. Haven't you noticed politicians with special rings? Check them before they got into politics. You notice that their fingers are empty. When they enter politics, you see one or two big rings. The ring is usually big, either red uh, or black. You think it's ordinary. It's not ordinary. You. They collect those things either from India, Tibet, or any of their branches in the world. <laughs> you know, Satan has branches. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm talking about Bayelsa and all those places. I don't know why, why it's Rivera area that normally give jazz. Praise the Lord. That's the truth. Queen of the coast and all those places. So when you go there, don't just go there and say, don't worry, I have a pure heart. And you're not a prayer warrior. No knowledge of the Bible, you go there. You come back as a cripple. I'm telling you. Some people go there spirit filled and they come out as womanizers. They've, they will just send one or two or three Lebanese ladies to you and then they convert you. And you come out and start uh, praise the Bible. They say, ah, this guy don't even know he's praise the Lord again. <laughs> they have changed your IP address. <laughs> praise the Lord. Now I'm telling you, you know, I was preaching this somewhere in Ondo, and a one-time House of Rep member met me <laughs> after the meeting and was like really interested. You know what shocked me? Me, I was feeling that these things people know it. I mean, it's normal now. How would you not know that you are supposed to go with the power of God? You go to a council meeting where you know everybody is present and the night before you didn't pray, you just sat in the meeting. They may just blow breeze on you and you sleep. When they are making decisions, you slept. Or, say, or how do they say it? If you all says I or nay, I'll be how do they say it again? And you'll be sleeping. They will make decisions that affect you. Then you wake up, bros, what's in the evil talk? They've already passed the decision. Praise the Lord. But we don't have to be afraid of what is happening there. We need to go there. Believe you me, one of the purposes of my life is to raise men that are going to go into government. Praise the Lord. And the truth, we, we cannot send you until you graduate. Because if we send you when you have not graduated, you know what will happen to you now? You come back smoking weed. <laughs> and they say, is this not uh, Brother James? He said, bros, leave that scene. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, you don't know the devil can hack on your brain. You, we always, we'll just say the guy don't Kolo, but in reality, what does Kolo mean? They change your settings in the brain. You don't mix A and B and then you start saying different things. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you have to go in the power of the Spirit. And not only politics, but today we are talking about governance and politics. If you have uncles that are in government, begin to get close to them, as in try to find out what is going on. Of course, if you have some uncles, some of them can be a bad influence if you are not wise. Because, you know, after hearing the message I listened, I said, Pastor said I should go and get close to them. And they start sending you a message to go and get girls from, from Uniport. He said, uh, obey your masters in the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's not what I'm talking about. You need, people need to know what you stand for. In fact, there are people who will know that you are a man of integrity. And they will give you that respect. But when you are neither here nor there, that's when they send you anyhow. Praise the Lord. I had an uncle, at one time he was wealthy. When he's sending message, he can send anybody, but when he reads to me, I believe pastor. Even that was far before I ever thought of being in the ministry. So by your life, they just know you that no, this one is not is not part of the game. But when someone meets you and doesn't know your identity, praise the Lord. So we're trusting God that a lot of you will rise into that position. God is going to take you to places of power. Even when you get to total Ajip or LNG, if you don't have governmental mindset, they will keep you in one position. You say, thank God, I recollect my two million, JJ. My brother, what is two million compared to 200 million? But because you don't have that skill of enterprise, you'll just be there. And in heaven, God is saying, I sent you there to feed 1,000 persons. 
But to you now, you are thinking of yourself. Praise the Lord. Are you seeing the problem God is having? Anytime we pray, God sends help to men. New jobs, new appointments, new promotions. But what do they do with it? Praise the Lord. You know, if you leave me, I will talk to you tomorrow. Let's rise up to pray. This is one of the topics that is really strong on my heart because when we continue to complain, Buhari is a bad leader. Buhari is this. Who voted Buhari into power? Eh? You and I voted him. We joined forces, our churches. Hey, he has come to bring change. But rather, he has brought chains. Praise the Lord. How many believers came out and say they are contesting for presidency? How many did you know? It's all about, uh, how will I put it? A, B, and C. None of them is good. You just, you just choose one. Are you getting my point? We didn't have any good alternatives. No good alternatives. Hey, Jonathan, he sat there. He was not doing well. Buhari, well, let's try you. No other person. And that's what politics usually is. They just bring seven of them bad eggs. You just choose the less, <laughs> the lesser of the evils. But it's surely an evil. That's because a lot of us reject those places. But God wants you to go there not to act the way they're acting. What did the Bible say? When good people are in authority, the people do what? Do you think he was talking about church leadership? It's governance. Who appointed kings in Israel? Who? God sent Elijah. He said, go and anoint a king for me in two nations, in Israel and in Syria. So God is still in the business of appointing kings. But the problem God is having is that he doesn't have men who will be appointed. So many times God allows the enemy to appoint whoever he wants to appoint because the believers are not ready. We're not interested. If I ask us now, how many of us have been in any form of leadership before? You may be surprised that many people will not even raise their hand. When you're here, leadership, eh, no, I beg, I don't want, I don't want all this uh, stress, stress. Meanwhile, that is actually what God is doing over our lives. Praise the Lord. Let's begin to talk to God and say, Father, put a burden upon my heart. Put a burden upon my heart for the kingdom of God. In whatever aspect that you want me to function, in governance, in business, in media, in law, in entertainment, in agriculture, in medicine, whatever aspect that you want me to function, Lord, put a burden in my heart. Put a burden in my heart. Let me have an obsessive passion to establish your kingdom in the chosen area that you have called me to. Have you called me to be in ministry? Have you called me to be in politics? Have you called me to be in media? Have you called me to be in, 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 in oil and gas? Whatever aspects that you have called me to, create a passion in me. Put that passion upon me. Let me express what you want to accomplish on the earth. Help me, Lord. Help me, Father. Help me in the name of Jesus. Help me, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Because of time, I want to read this and we'll round up. Isaiah 45, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings, to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gate shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass, and cut in sunder the bands of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that the Lord which called thee by thy name am the God of Israel. Before you pray, before you pray, this passage is, belongs to a man who was sent. Praise the Lord. Many times we pray for blessings. We claim blessings inappropriately because the blessing comes with a certain an assignment. Cyrus, God says, I'm sending you to make Israel successful. And so, I'm giving you this blessing. 
So are you a sent person? What assignment are you responding to? If God opens the treasure, the two leaf gates and losing the loins of king, what is loins? Loins is waist. Why did he say lose the loins of king? Because kings tie juju on their waist. God says I will disarm that juju they put there. That's what that passage is saying. You think it's today they started tying juju on the waist. <laughs> it's a long time. Praise the Lord. So God is saying I will lose in their strength, their power. They will not have power over you if you are a sent person. And that's why you're going to pray and say, Lord, send me. So that the blessing of the sent can, act, can follow me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, send me. Here am I. Here am I. Send me. Oh God, send me that the blessing, the anointing of Cyrus can function in my life. In every area of my life, I can see your hand. I will see your hand because I'm responding to your call. I'm responding to your instruction. Lord, let the whole of heaven go before me. I am sent. I'm following your instructions. Let the two leaf gates be open. Let the bars of iron be cut asunder. Let the treasures of darkness be given to me. Hidden riches in secret places. Lord, prove your grace and power upon my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I pray that you will ignite a passion in the hearts of your people. We ask, oh God, that as they live here, they will begin to think about this message. And Lord, your spirit will begin to plant seeds of righteousness in their hearts. Somehow, they will begin to see passion being developed in different areas. They will no longer sit still. And Lord, let the passion be like that of Jeremiah. Like fire in their bones. That they will not rest until they fulfill it. And Father, we pray that the anointing that you brought upon Cyrus will be released upon your people. As we obey you, let the blessing follow. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name.